Hey everyone, Danny Webster here from Pocketnow.com, and this is a software review of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play, and this is the unlocked European version, so it may be different from the versions that come to the States. So let's get started. So the Xperia Play is running Android 2.3, along with the Sony Ericsson user interface that includes the timeline. And if I go here, I can view my timeline, and this allows me to update my status through Facebook and Twitter directly from my device, and I can also view um, what my friends have posted as their status updates. So if I want, I can just go here, and I can select my events, I can go here and add a new message if I like, if I want to change my status. I'll just go back home. If we slide to the right, we get the media player, which of course all these widgets can be rearranged to the exact way that you want them to be arranged. So I have some photos here, so I can view a photo if I like that I took on the device. Uh, the camera does not work too great, and I'll show you that in just a few minutes. And we can also view, listen to some of the media here. I have a song that I started playing, and the speakers for this device are phenomenal. And I wonder if I like, it's probably the best speakers that I've ever heard on any mobile device. It sounds just like a regular stereo system that you would that you would pay hundreds of dollars for. So we can go back. We can go over here, and we can view the clock, which is also just another widget. And we can also get tips and information go down here, we can add things to these folders on the bottom. So we can add our media, we can go down here and change our messaging. I don't have any text messages in there right now. We can also go to our contact list, and let's just click done. And I'm sure that it will try to show my phone number, one of my phones here. So I can view my contact list, and I can also view my favorites, and go to the call log. So we'll just go back. And let's see, what else do we have? We have the phone, so this is the dialer. Unfortunately, uh, we still are unable to get a speed dial setting to come up on this device. So hopefully Android or Google implements that in the future because it would be nice to just start dialing and have a name come up like it does on certain HTC devices. So we'll just go all the way to this side. We have our PlayStation Pocket, which uh, shows our recently played games, and we can also get more games. And we also have these other widgets, which allow us to turn and turn off radios. So if we click down here, we can view some of the live wallpaper that are included. And it only comes with a very select few. It comes with the uh, generic Android live wallpaper, along with the classic PSP and the original PSP live wallpaper. So we can just go back, and you can change the colors on those live wallpapers. So if I go down here, I can go to my applications, and I can rearrange them based upon the my own order. I can uh, change them to alphabetical, which I have set right now, most used, and recently used, which is a great thing to have recently installed, I should say. So uh, it's nice to be able to have the applications where you exactly want them based upon your own pre preferences. So I have the alarm, I have my browser, which this device already had Flash 10.1 installed, and I upgraded that to 10.2. We have our default calculator, but it is reskinned to the Xperia uh, user interface kind of style. So we can just go back. We have our calendar, it's pretty big, and I like how this calendar is set up. So I can view the months and uh, the days. I can also view my events. We have the camera application, and the camera on this device does not work too great. Um, it wouldn't take photos in low light very well, and whenever I had it set to auto flash, it always like overexposed the photos. So uh, I'll show you that in the final review, but we'll just skip this for now. And we also have our clock, which is the default clock on every Android device that's out about now. And we have our contacts, which we already saw, we have email, Facebook. This does include Facebook installed on it, so uh, you can also upgrade that through the market. We have our gallery, so we can view our photos. And this is the same gallery that comes on every Android device that's coming out these days. So we can view a photo here. You can zoom in, zoom out, and uh, change the way that that's uh, displayed. So we'll just go back home, go to our applications. You can also get games. I'll show you that in just a second. And go to our Gmail, our Google search, our Latitude, which you've all seen, our Liveware Manager, which this is pretty cool because if you plug in a headset, you can uh, predetermine which application it's going to launch. So if I wanted to, I could have it launch the music application based upon if I just plug in a headset or headphones or whatever. So we can just go back. We have our media server, which allows us to sync wirelessly with our computers over a network connection. So all I have to do is click this little button, and it will turn on, and then I can add or delete photos or media 
to and from the Xperia Play. So we'll just go back. We have our messaging, our music, which we already saw on the first uh, widget. We have our navigation, which is the same navigation that comes on Android 2.1 and above. We have our news and weather. We have a basic version of Office 2. This isn't the pro version. Let's see if I have anything on here. I think I had one thing. Uh, maybe not. Okay. So this is just an Office viewer. If you get the pro, you can edit things. We have our places. We have our Play Now, which allows us to uh, play media over the PlayStation Network, so you can download things. And also, but I haven't logged in yet, so we'll just go back and get PlayStation Pocket, which shows us the same thing that we saw in the beginning. We can see all of our recently played and our recently added games. We have our postcard, which allows us to send uh, M MMS messages. Uh, in the form of a postcard, and it also allows you to add geotagging information. And go to our settings. We have our setup guide, which is this is pretty uh, in depth to set up. So it shows you practically everything that you need to do to set up the Xperia Play. We'll just go back. Support information allows you to search for anything. We can sync with the PlayStation Network and the Sony Ericsson Network, I should say. We have Google Talk, which is, is a basic. Android application that allows you to uh, forward phone calls to and from your device. We have a few more games and the timescape we've already seen. Track ID, which allows you to, it's kind of like Shazam, you can record audio and then it will listen to it and then it will show you exactly what artist and track and album that is coming from. Also, a voice search and Xperia Play and YouTube. So, let's go to the Xperia Play and I'll show you how some games work on this device. So it does come with five games. Of course, we're predicting that when it is launched in the States, it will come with better games. Another theory is that this device may be the like predecessor to the NGP, the PSP2 that's coming out in the future that does allow for screen touches and also uh, better controls because the other NGP device has these two uh, joysticks, uh, but they are, of course, our joysticks. They aren't touch pads like they are in the Xperia Play. So let's go into a game here. We'll try Bruce Lee, and I'll show you how the gameplay works. Okay, so we can either select through the menus on our D-pad here, or we can also use the on-screen. So let's just choose yes. We'll touch the screen, and uh, let's see here. I'm just go to play, and I think it's easier to select using the touch screen than it is to use the D-pad. We'll just go to arcade. And let's see here, combat settings, uh, we'll just go fight, and now we can begin playing this game, and it's a pretty simple fighting game. Okay, so the video graphics are really good, the rendering is excellent, it's uh, far superior to the PSP, and uh, let's see how we can uh, try fighting this guy. Of course, I haven't played this too much, so we'll see. And uh, the gameplay works really well, the buttons are accurate and precise, so let's see here. Continue playing, and uh, let's just try a different game. So another cool feature is you can just slide out the the uh, game pad and then it will bring up your Xperia Play. You can change that in the settings by going here and change it to if you want it to activate or not. So Crash Bandicoot is a PS1 game that's been ported over to the Xperia Play, so we don't really need to see that. This is a pretty neat game. Uh, I don't think it's available on the PSP, at least I haven't found it. It might be available on the like a UMD disc, so we'll see how this game works. And this game does utilize the touch pads down below so we can steer and all that other great stuff. Let's see if we can bypass all this. Okay, so we can either play with the touch pads down below so we can steer with the touch pads and they're pretty responsive. They're not the best. Let's see here. I think it's a little bit easier to use the D-pad while steering this vehicle. So uh, let's just go up and down. Now we want to attack something. So let's see here. I'm going to continue, and if I want, I can shoot something over here. And the game continues on like this, and uh, you have to beat various missions through the campaign. So we'll just go to another game. Okay, so here we are on The Sims 3, and for this game, we need to use both the touchscreen and the device controller. So let's go here. Let's say when I want to move my guy, I want to select some place outside. I'll have him move around. I can also use one of the buttons to have the, uh, the camera pan towards him. I can move the camera around with the touch pad and I can also use the directional pad to move it around. If I want to change the view I can do that just by going here and I can uh, change the view using the touch pad. This touch pad doesn't really do much for any of the games except for that Star Battalion game. So we'll just go back home. 
So to get more games, all we have to do is go down here and to get games. And there's only about four other games that are available, and I downloaded three of them because they were free. And uh, they're just demos, so we can just go back. So if we go to the settings, we can go to about information and view that the device is running at Android 2.3.2, which is a little bit older than the version that was released for the Nexus 1 and the Nexus S. can also go back. One thing that is missing from this Xperia Play is the ability to turn off the automatic light sensor. So if I go down here, I can change the brightness, but I can't turn off the automatic light sensor. Even if I go home and go over here, I can still change the brightness, but it doesn't turn it off. Like any time that I move the device in a various angle, as you, I don't know if you can see that, but the, but the brightness is changing so frequently that it becomes rather irritating. We can also go down here to the settings, and this particular unlocked device does have Wi-Fi hotspots available that you can use over your 3G connection. Unfortunately, in the United States, we do not have a 3G capable 900, 2100 bands. Okay, so one final thing that we'll do is we're going to run a quadrant standard benchmark test and we'll just let this load. So let's run the full benchmark and I'll be right back and we'll see how it compares to some other devices. Okay, so the Xperia Play got a 1584 on the quadrant standard test, so that's a much faster than a Nexus One running Android 2.2. So this has been the software review of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. And if you like our videos, make sure you give us a thumbs up and also leave some comments down below. If in case you missed it, you can check out the hardware tour and the unboxing. And you can also stay up to date on the US release of the Xperia Play by subscribing to our YouTube channel or following us on our website, pocketnow.com. Thanks for watching.